It's the spooky season, and you know what that means? I need to do something that I will immediately regret. I like doing the rankings. I think they're a lot of fun. However, I'm being a bit weird about it because of that. As you would have known from the title of the damn video, I'm ranking all of the villains, all the baddies of Doctor Who, specifically the revival. I was tempted to do the entire run, and maybe I will one day, but I haven't got an eternity. I've got a very small human lifespan. I'll die! So I'm going to do the ranking as normal, S-A-B-F. But also, would I... You know, would I, uh... Give him a little kiss. Would I give him a little kiss is the question here. Oh, you'll also notice that some villains you may think will be on this list are not. And there's a very good reason. Well reasons. The first is that I don't really consider them a villain. Maybe they're a monster like the Ood, perfect example. People may count that as a villain. No, it's the beast or whatever's happening in Planet of the Ood or Doctor's Wife. You know, they're always controlled, you know? Not fair. Not fair. Also, I wouldn't give them a little kissy anyway. And then I'm sure there's more that I will just blatantly ignore because I either forget they exist or I don't count them. If you've got one I think I missed, put it in the comments and I'll respond with the pitch perfect reasoning that I will have. Again, it could just be I forgot. Anywho, starting off with series one, very good stuff. Start with the Autons though. Now the Autons I think are very strong. They're a very good villain. However, they are kind of limited. Much like with the Ice Warriors, uh, which I'll get to, you can only really do one kind of story with it. Or like, you know, it's either a uh, environmental thing or just like an invasion, you know? They're good. They're creepy. I've just realised I should probably have some criteria for how I rank them normally. Twelve seconds later. Okay, I think I've got two. Number one is that they have to be scary. Classic Doctor Who villain stuff. If you don't hide behind the sofa, then you're kind of weak. I can't actually go behind the sofa though because there's no gap. Back. I can try. I can... Help! The bit wasn't worth it. I hurt my leg. But also, they have to just be kind of cool. You have to want to see them again. When I see you again. For example, let's apply it to this. The Autons. Are they scary? In this episode, I would say yes. Are they scarier in the classic run? Maybe, but we're not talking about that. We're not talking. And would I like to see them return in this form? Hmm. Oh, I also counted the nesting consciousness as a thing. The goop. The goop. Am I scared of the goop? That's got a scary voice. I think this is your standard who monster. Your standard who. So I'm going to put that between A and B. Now, would I give them a little kissy? Would I give a little kissy to a plastic man? Or woman? Or goop? I have no strong feelings about it. I'm not... I'm, I'm going to leave it blank for now. Autons, sorry. Not kiss-worthy. Next up I've put Cassandra, that skank. She is a bit creepier in New Earth, the beginning of New Earth, where she's like, peek But I don't think I was ever scared. Also, I'm not counting Chip or the little robot spiders, because they're like slaves, and that's not nice. They don't want to do evil, they're forced to do it, and that's not on. Cassandra! If she didn't have such a good ending in New Earth for her character, I'd love to see her again. Zoe Wanamaker. I remember the name this time. Zoe Wanamaker. Fantastic performance. But is she an A? Again, she's not very scary. That's the problem. Genuinely, it's another middle of the road. Is that bad? I'm putting her there anyway. But to make it up to you, don't worry. I'm gonna give her a little kissy. I'll tell you why. All that work, all those surgeries, she keeps the face. That is going to be the most perfect mouth you have ever kissed. I'm only two characters in. I don't like where this is going. I'm not excited to see where it goes. The Gelf. Gassy. <laughs> now this one is a little spooky. Ooh, this one was a little spooky, wasn't it? I wouldn't necessarily want to see him back. I, I'm not excited about the Gelf. It's not that memorable, is it, really? We like the Gelf, we like the gassy people, but... Eh, they're okay. They're okay. Good episode, though. Very strong. But not because of the Gelf. Let's be real. I would not give them a little kissy though, because they're gas. You just be like, Mmm. and they probably don't smell very good. Like, have you ever sniffed like just a gas hob that's not lit yet? Death. I don't want to die via kissy. Then again, the Slitheen. Oh, the Slitheen, the family Slitheen. We're going to talk specifically about Margaret uh, in a bit, 
don't panic. Okay, fear factor. Genuinely, Little Jack pooed himself. Watching it back, it's sort of campy fun, but do you remember that shot where the Slovene grabs that guy and pushes him up against like the ceiling? Oh my God, wicked. I want to put it in an S. I really do. The Slovene is pretty cool, but it gets downgraded to an A because of the farting. Like, come on. Maybe they were worried that it was too scary for kids, so they had to offset it with their human counterparts being these fat <laughs> peoples. But like, yeah. I would absolutely not kiss the Slovene. I feel like they'd eat me, and not in a fun way. The Lone Dalek. Now I specified this as its own character, separate from the Daleks, because really, that's what it is. It's its own thing. The first S tier for a truly fantastic and memorable baddie. I think it's probably the only Dalek, or one of the only Daleks, that is truly terrifying, or can be truly terrifying, but you also, you can't look away. You want to see what it does. It's a truly unique Dalek. I was going to say I have no strong feelings, but I would not give Lone Dalek a little kissy, because you're bursting the flames. So I'm not going to touch him then. Next up is the Jagrafess and the editor. I've scripted them together because I don't have strong feelings on either, to be honest with you. Don't get me wrong, Simon Pegg, you love him. Shaun of the Dead, Hot Fuzz, World's End, other films he's probably been in. But are they F? Because they serve their purpose, you know. They're not bad. They're just unmemorable, which you could debate is worse. I'm going to put it between B and F because they don't deserve an F, but they don't deserve any higher than a B. I wouldn't give the Jagrafess a kissy, but you know I'd give the editor one. Pucker up, Peg! The Reapers, and also Rose in Father's Day, because let's be real, who's the real villain? Rose! Rose! But the Reapers are terrifying, Jesus Christ! Father's Day is already an S tier, as we all know, but the Reapers are truly terrifying. I'd like to see them again, I would! Does Rose bring it down though? I feel like that's cruel of me. I should have had it on a separate thing. Because Rose is kind of a villain. Just the fact that she won't go away. Or didn't go away. I'm going to put the Reapers between S and A. You may disagree. You may think, I don't even think about the Reapers that much. Well, I wake up every day wanting the Reapers to come back. I am the president of the Reapers Return Fan Club. Don't fact check me. I tell so many lies, I could run for president. I don't know if I'd give the Reapers a little kissy. I mean, it would be cool to say you've kissed a dragon. But you know who I would give a little kissy? Rose! She's the villain. I don't care what you say. And who wouldn't want to kiss Billy Piper? Matt Smith got in on the action in the Diary of a Cool Girl. You know this, you know. Empty Child! Definitely not kissing that one. But when it comes to being a villain, ooh, Empty Child's scary! One of the scariest the show's ever had. And no, I would not want them to return. Because A, I don't want those nightmares again, and B, it's one of those ones that shouldn't be redone. They should stay a one-off, really. People say that about the Air uh, Weeping Angels as well. Disagree. They should keep coming back. They work in different settings and different horror genres. The Empty Child, it's like, why, why would you, you wouldn't do a sci-fi epic with a child wearing a gas mask, would you? Stick with my gut here and say the Empty Child is definitely an S tier. They're so memorable. Even though just one episode in 2005, is that all they appeared in? You still remember them, don't you? But it's not the only villain in the episode. Next up is Captain Jack Harkness. <laughs> because none of this would happen. None of the threat in that episode would happen, much like Rose in Father's Day, without Captain Jack being a right old dick. And with his dick out. It's still fun. But Captain Jack, as a villain, genuinely, A, it's going in A. Such a lovable asshole in both ways. Similar to Rogue many years later. Ooh, I didn't put Rogue as an option, I should do that. And obviously I'm giving Captain Jack a little kissy. Say what you will about John Barrowman. The man's hot. I did not specify where I'd give the little kissy either. <laughs> Margaret to Slovene, I told you I'd get back to Annette. Oh, she's good. Also, side note, I went to Disneyland Paris with my family, humble brag, and there was a pirate animatronic, or like figurine or whatever there, on the ride of Pirates of the Caribbean that looked suspiciously like Annette Badland. I know it's not her, it's not supposed to be her, but it looks like her and it's weird. And I know it looks like her because I'm not the one who pointed it out, Gemma did. But Margaret Savine, on her own, is she top tier? I don't know if I put her in S, but she's definitely between A and S. Would I want to see her again? Kind of, you can do that. She didn't die, she was an egg. She became an egg, as you do. 
I think more Doctor Who villains should turn into an egg. I want at the end of Love and Monsters for the Absorbal off to be like, oh, tastes like chicken, oh, blah, 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 and it becomes an egg. That would be a nice episode. She's climbing out the window, isn't she? But I'm still gonna give her a kiss. The Dalek Emperor. That big bastard, oh, I love him. I don't think I was ever scared of the Emperor. The Daleks, yes, the Emperor, no. Maybe it's because he's just stuck in his fat chair, just lounging, pretending to be God. But he's still really cool, and I'd love to see the Emperor back in full force. Have we? I know we have the Dalek Prime Minister, which is like, cool. You know what? Let's go between S and A. And if I was scared of him, if I was truly like, ah, of him, you know, then he might be higher, but, uh, he's not, so who cares? Covering Captain Jack, probably for the best. Uh, I have no strong feelings either way of whether I would give him a kissy. Quite large and well defended, so it would be like achievement get if you did. I wouldn't kiss the thing inside the tube, but I'd, ki I'd kiss the glass. I can, you know, just to say you had. The Dalek army, so just your standard Dalek drone, I guess. They're cool. I'm gonna put that in an A. The Daleks have had so many hits and so many misses. Okay, from here on out, if I don't put them on the board or mention a kissy, just assume I have no strong opinions. Cool? Cool. Cigarettes! We're on to David Tennant! -a. Oh yes, any excuse to bring out the impression. Big finish, call me. They've got a nice design, I guess they're like tribal. That's fun, that's unique, probably maybe. There be. They serve their purpose, they're all right. No kissy for you though. But of course the true villain of the Christmas invasion was Harriet Jones, former prime minister. Yes, I know who the hell you are, shut up. Fam. British politician, disgusting. I've cut a lot of characters from this just because they're redeemed and they're not fully a villain. But in this one, murders an entire ship full of Fleeing creatures, they're leaving, they're going, you know? And would I want to see her back? No, because she's dead. I'm going to put a bang in the middle. Makes her eviler than the cigarettes. <laughs> the kitty cat nurses. I wouldn't rush to see them return, you know? They're evil. I think one of them was uh, Martha Jones's mum. That's fun. Novice Hay was cute. I like her. Right in the middle. Kitty got claws though, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, this doesn't make me a furry, by the way. Okay. Moving on to werewolves and those bald monks. Definitely not kissing either of them. I don't want to die. Also, bald. Ugh. Get some hair, then we'll talk. <laughs> I forgot how much I was scared of the werewolf. I always remember it as like that okay tenant era episode. Like, you know, your early tenant, it's like whatever. But re-watching it? Ooh, spooky scary. Uh, yeah, it unlocked some memories for me, let me tell ya. Would I want him back? No. The werewolf on his own would probably be an A. But with my arbitrary shit rules, <laughs> they get downgraded. Krillotane and Mr. Finch. Don't think I was ever scared of the Krillotane. <laughs> you know, it's like, ooh, well, I scared the shit out of my cat. But Mr. Finch is pretty cool. He's pretty cool. But is he cool enough? I think that's a B. No offense to Finch. I love him. And I'll make it up to him by giving him a little kiss. Anthony Head is that his name? <laughs> Just kidding, it's only me. But it's a clockwork droid mask that I got from James of Madame Who Swords. I know I've said this before, but he just gave me this. Who does that? <laughs> Hoping another Madame Who Swords happens at some point in the future. And you know I'm giving this a kiss. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that felt weird, but I'm still put I, I did it, so it goes on the list. The clockwork droids, of course, are most famous from Girl in the Fireplace, but this includes Deep Breath 2, because I think they're either... Wife! It's either, like, the sister ship, or the same shit, I don't know. But does it weigh it down? Probably not. I think they're both, both equally quite scary. They're very scary. If you were a child and under your bed this sprouted out of it, you'd shit yourself. Would I want to see him again? Well, he did, in deep breath. I think that's an S, genuinely. I don't sound enthused. That's because I'm eating the chocolate. Speaking of robots, the ultimate robot. No, it's a cyborg. The Cybermen, again, as a collective, like the, uh, Dalek army, and you know what, it's only right that I put the Cyberman next to the Daleks in N.A. Can't go wrong with the Cybermen. Unless it's Nightmare and Silver, then you absolutely can. No strong feelings of whether I'd give them a kiss, because on the one on the one hand they're these like, you know, built, sleek, muscular, kind of, kind of sexy. But on the other hand, they're dead bodies uh, strung about in a metal exoskeleton, so... It's, it's hard to make my mind up, really. But on the same lines, I've got Jonathan Lumix slash the Cyber Leader. 
big old slash down the middle because that's what happened to John Lumick to make the cyber leader. Just a big old slash. <laughs> Excellent. My favourite bit is when he's getting taken away, uh, like forcibly his wheelchair's being roboted into the conversion. He's like, no, no. And the cyber leader is where the scares come in because that bit where he's like ripping the bits off him and he's climbing the ladder. Oh, that is scary. Age of Steel is peak cyber fears for me until Capaldi. But we'll get to Capaldi, don't worry. Right now we're still on David Tennant. Oh yes! I think that's also an A. It's not an S tier because, I, again, maybe the cyber leader would be, but you can't really separate him from John Lumick, you know. The Wire slash Mr. Magpie, I've combined these two because I can, and this is my ranking, so shut up. I don't think I'd kiss the wire, because on the one hand, she's, you know, she's, she's a little, she's she bad, but at the same time, you're just kissing a screen of a TV, and that's weird. Do you have strong feelings for the wire? I don't think I was ever scared of the wire. Certainly wasn't scared of Magpie, the bird or the character. I'm the wire. I'm going to suck in your face. Ooh, maybe I'm back on board. We are the Legion of the Beast. God, he's cool, isn't he? Straight in S tier. That voice, Gabriel Wolf, is tremendous. His just vibe, his aura, he's so hench. It's so cool. Yes, I give him a kissy. Next is Peter K. Okay, it's the absorber loft, but I wrote Peter K. Well, I wasn't scared of Peter K. Honestly, I was more scared of Tennant in the flashback, where you come downstairs, there's the dead mum, and Tennant's just stood there like, well, I'm not cleaning it up. I am entertained, you know, I wouldn't say it's an F. I think he goes with the Jagger Fest and the editor, honestly, between B and F down here. Because, like, I can't be mad at it. I'd like to be, but I'm not. The Isolus and Kirabi Wada from Fear Her. F. I mean, you could debate Isolus isn't a villain, but at the same time, it wants to delete the world from existence. The entire Earth. The a bit evil, whether you like it or not. I don't care how lonely you are. Oh, do I count the graffiti dad? Well, no, that's technically the Isolus doing that as well. That's scary. That freaked me out. But it's not enough to bump it out from F. Cult of Scarrow. Woohoo! I don't think I wrote Dalek Sex separately, so I'm counting all four as one, including Dalek Khan, who's kind of a chad. He flew into the Time War somehow. Cool. Time lock be damned. Washing's done. Now, here's the obvious comparison. I've put the Daleks, sort of standard Daleks, in A. I put the Dalek Emperor in the middle, and I've put the low Dalek in S. So who do they rank up to? Because they're definitely at least an A. Let's try and win myself over. Who gives the monkeys about Thay and Jast? So half the cult is like, whatever. Sex cool. <laughs> Dalek Sek is very interesting as a character. He goes on quite the journey. And Dalek Khan is there. He's weird. I'm gonna put him in the middle. They're a very strong idea. Very strong idea. But if they were all sort of unique in their own special ways, I think it'd be better. Make them a little goofy. I don't know, have one of them tell jokes. <laughs> Next from the same episode is Yvonne Hartman. Oh, I'm giving her a little kissy. How the fuck do you spell Yvonne? She's still going in the Torchwood audios, isn't she? Weird. Wait, did she die? Yvonne's just fun. You're not scared of her, obviously. That would be strange if you were scared of strong women. What are you, a Redditor? Would I want to see Yvonne back? Well, we've seen her back. So clearly there's an audience for this. But am I the audience? It's my ranking. No. B. Whatever. Next is the Rachnos, the Empress of the Rachnos. Yep. We like powerful women. We stand them in this house. I'm married to one. But she's really cool. I'd love to see the Rachnos back. It was such a cool effect to have her there, like her torso, sting out this massive spider. Excellent performance. I'm going to go in A. You may disagree. You may disagree. I can't hear you, though. You can shout at the screen all you want. I can't hear you. Na, 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 na. Next, this is the scariest of them all. Gareth Roberts, F tier. Definitely not getting a kissy from me. But anyway, Carrie Knights, the witches, innit? Now, here's the thing about the kissy though. Because on the one hand, you get like Lilith, right? In her human form. Beautiful, temptress, excellent. Okay, then if you give her a kissy, you're gonna die. That guy at the beginning of the episode who gets lured in by Lilith. Looks a bit like me. Am I going to learn from this cautionary tale, or will I give a kissy anyway? 
And she is hot though. Lilith! Are they scary? They are a little bit at the beginning, but I think the more the episode goes on and that <laughs> the more that goes on, it's like, all right, we get it. And would I want to see them back? I don't think so. I think I'm okay with them staying in that little crystal ball. Do you reckon they were put in there just because they might come back? The witches are just a bit of makeup. So maybe if we just store them there, maybe we can bring them back. And everyone was like, no oh, thank you. They're bang in the middle. So for gridlock, I put drugs. Because, you know, there's no real villain in gridlock. Not really. It's not the face of Bo. It's not Novice Hay. It's not even the Doctor. It, like, actually, I guess it's those two who kidnapped Martha at the beginning. That's a bit fucked up. But the true villain is drugs. Jack Reeves says no to drugs. I'm going to put it in F. So F tier currently is Gareth Roberts, Drugs and the Isolus. <laughs> pigs. Uh, I just wrote pigs uh, with oink in, in brackets. Oh, the pig slaves. Oh, that's not fair. Here's the thing. They may be slaves, like in the same way that U Ood is, but they are bred to be evil. They're bred to be dicks. But then again, Laszlo, he breaks the conditioning. Do the pigs count? Play it safe. I'm going to say it's not their fault. But if you disagree with me, that's fine. That's absolutely fine. It's not fine, but it is. But is it? Next up is Lazarus. Now, here's another tricky one with the kissy. Because on the one hand, you get Mark Gatiss. Handsome, young, beautiful, blonde, Mark Gatiss. But then he turns into, uh... <coughs> Still would, though, to be honest. That's, that's a challenge, and I wish to complete. Hey, if Martha's sister can do it, so can I. Now, is he scary? I don't remember, genuinely don't remember being scared by him until the ending in the church. That can die. But the rest of the episode, he's just kind of this smarmy, creepy guy. I'm gonna put him in the middle. On the one hand, he's just a creepy old guy, but on the other hand, he's really scary in the last five minutes. Now I say it like that, it goes down to a B. Uh, next I put the son. Not son as in boy of father. Son as in the son from 42 and Rings of Akaten. They are different sons, probably, maybe, but Akaten and Boy 2 are just bastard sons, aren't they? I wouldn't give them a kissy, because I'd burn to death. Don't think I'm scared. I'm scared when it inhabits the Doctor. That's creepy. Burn me the Doctor. That's not the sun. I mean, it's kind of cool just to look at the sun and be like, oh, it's alive. Akaten went a bit far by giving it a big old face. Who gives a fuck about the sun as a villain? What's its motivation? Why does it want death? Ah! Straight to S is the family of blood, baby! All four of them, see? You take four characters, Colt Scarrow, hope you're listening, and you make them all cool and scary in their own right. Granted, father of mine and daughter of mine don't really have much going on. It's just a creepy little girl with balloon and big fat farmer man. Doctor! Thank you, I am a professional impressionist. <laughs> also, James Sutton. I have a beard now. I don't look like son of mine anymore. Bite me. Oh, I didn't put the scarecrows. Hmm. I'll, I'll add them. Because really, genuinely, you may disagree, but scarecrow, equally scary. Would I want to see them back? Yes, actually I would. Imagine if they all break free of their chains. Well, I think daughter of mine was released, so maybe not her. But at the same time, you could bring them all back together because they'd be purrs. But also scared of him. You know what I mean? It's... It'd be interesting. Next is the weeping angles. I was always scared most of the 90 degree. Now here's the thing. We're not just talking about Blink. I know we're in the midst of series three. I had to think about that. But we're also talking about Time of Angels, Flesh and Stone, the village of the angels. Your standard weeping angel. I do have a couple of, of offshoots, but your standard angel. Yeah, my kid needs an S. There's never been a bad weeping angel story. And you can quote me on that. Next is the Jacobi master, Derek. Jacoby in his five minutes of masterdom. He was amazing as Professor Yana and also an S tier uh, as the master in those five minutes. Sim, I love ya, I do, baby, incredible, but come on. <laughs> There's another master boy, isn't there? There's Mr. Jonathan Sim. Now, I love him in World Enough in Time, but maybe it's just because of that immediate like, oh, this is the best thing ever. Oh, we're getting him instead. He is fun, never scary, Bang in the middle. Yes, I've put the Sim Master next to the Carrier Knights and the Cat Nurses. The big, big spiky ball. Big spiky ball with a child's head in it. That's fucked up. Oh, uh, Johnson gets a big old kissy, by the way. I think that... Oh, and Jacoby, actually, yeah. Top of fame, do not. Because 
Jesus Christ. So they go in an A, just because of how genuinely scary RTD made a ball. Oh, that, okay, yeah, no. Yeah, you remember that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. See, that's all it takes to be scared by the chocolate thing. Chocolate thing. Sometimes you got them. They're kind of like lint balls. Based on that reaction, they get bumped up to in between. And I'd like, I'd like to see them back. I want to see them try and tackle that again. I want Shooty to cry at it. Next is Max Capricorn and the host. Remember him? His name was Max. Ding. Really, Max Capricorn is in the Who Gives a Monkeys down here. But the hosts are kind of cool. I give the host a little kissy. This is Leela, one of my two cats. Uh, the other one has, uh, is Romana, she's with Gemma, because they have favourites. Leela's my favourite, not that you could tell by the way she just winced at me. But, and Ro is Gemma's favourite. This is how it works, isn't it, baby? I'm, I'm very much a cat dad now. Yeah, the hosts are kind of hot. The hosts are quite scary. The hosts are quite scary, genuinely. Freak me out as a kid, even though they're just angels that's like, INFORMATION! You're dead! Max Capricorn, not scary. Man in big box. Max Capricorn really weighs it down, and I mean physically. He must be so heavy. Miss Foster! MILF! <laughs> not counting the adipose. They're not villains. They didn't ask to be born. She did nearly kill the Doctor. That's kind of cool. Because we know the Doctor can die by a fall. Would have done it. Also would have killed Donna. Kind of evil move, you know. Pyroviles and Lucius Malfoy? No, that's not his name. Lucius Petrus Dextrus. Am I making that up? That sounds vaguely Greek. Is it Greek? Hey Jem, where's Venice? No, where's Pompeii? Italy. Fuck! Don't worry, I was just being um, geographically challenged. <laughs> but the Pyro do you remember them? Do you remember in Fires of Pompeii, the mm. Donna Noble one, where they're like big and rock and made of lava? Yeah. Do you like them? They're probably like a bee. You know? They're like a bee? Gemma says B. I'm not one to argue with my wife. And also the guy, he's an evil bastard. He's just being a man, and that's disgusting. Although he is on the hot list. The well, the one with the big horns, he's huge, he's red. Yeah, he's like the devil. The devil, yeah, yeah. that's the beast, oh, yeah. He's hot. yeah, okay, yeah. Oh, so you know, definitely know who I'm talking about. Oh. Just go. Oh. <laughs> you got Sim on there. Yeah, there he is. Uh, yeah. Oh, you would, you jump Sim's heart? Sure. Okay. I do. <laughs> and then, a solid sure. Who's the editor? Uh, jo um, Simon Pegg. Ooh. I don't know how to hold cats. Don't though. hold my child. Like yeah, that's fair. Come sweet child. Ooh. Ooh. See, they have favourites, I'm telling you. Captain Darling from Blackadder. Uh, that... <laughs> Daddy? Oh, Halpen. I did remember his name. I'm surprised I did. Uh, he's an asshole and a capitalist. Gross. However, he is still Captain Darling from Blackadder, so that's kind of cool. So I'm going to put him in B just for that. Would you give Captain Darling from Blackadder a kissy? Yeah. Then he'd go in in the kissy. Ah, the Sontarans, potato-y boys. Specifically, I've written General Stahl, because he's cool as hell. General Stahl of the 10th Sontaran fleet. Stahl the undefeated. Oh, that's a terrible name. What if you do get defeated? Stahl, they're not so quite undefeated anymore, but never mind. I wouldn't say they're S, but I'm going to put them straight in A. They're a solid A, especially Stahl, who's so goddamn cool. His voice, you wouldn't kiss a potato. Fake Martha. Oh, the clone. Yeah, fake Martha. Now, here's the thing. I would give her a little kissy. Free Miragement. Very saucy. But, they do specify that she fucking reeks. Is it worth the risk? Kind of. F and B. Between F and B. Food and beverage. General Cobb from the Doctor's Daughter. Uh, not the half. Uh, we don't know what they're saying, so I can't... They could be saying really nice things like, Oh my god, your hair is so beautiful, Martha Jones, or whatever. They could be really nice. But the one person we know who's an arsehole is Colonel Corn on the cob over it. I would not give Cobb a kissy. That's gross. He's old. <laughs> I like his voice. I don't remember a single thing he said. Come on, girl. You're one of us. Don't deny it. Sorry, Colonel Corn on the cob. Although, to be fair, you did do one of the most evil things, which is kill the doctor's daughter in front of him with a gun. That's kind of cool, but also fuck you. Because I'm one of the people who actually likes Jenny. So that's... Rude of you. Doesn't put you to a B though. Buzzy boy, Mr. Best Perform. <laughs> now here's another one. Another tricky one. The shape-shifting conundrum. Because would you give him a kissy if he was a reverend? Yes. He's a holy man. It's kind of cheeky, you know. But then he turns into a fucking wasp. So it's another middle, I'd say, the best perform. Oh, actually, is it though? Uh... I don't have strong feelings towards the Vespiform. 
enough to remember its name, granted, and the fact that you had to build it in the character options thing was kind of cool, not that I ever could. Moving on to an S tier, Vashta Narada. <laughs> How have they not come back? Come on, you've got Stephen Moffat writing again. You have no excuse, Russell. I know where you live. Really scary stuff. I would not give them a kissy. They would turn me into a skeleton. And, I mean, I'm already skinny. I don't need to be any skinnier. Great name, too. I wonder if it's, like, Latin for something. It's probably Latin for shadow, if I had to guess. Editing Jack. Google it. That's fun. But Editing Jack has found out that the Vashna Narada means the shadows that melt the flesh. And that's pretty cool. Next is the Midnight Monster. We don't know what they look like. Uh, they might not have any form, so I might not be able to give them a kissy. Uh, although if they're in the sky body, maybe. But we're not talking about that. But Jesus Christ, they're terrifying. Some people would say they're overhyped at this point. That Midnight is, like Blink, kind of... It's like... We all know it's good, but is it that? Yes, it is. Grow up. I like how Russell T. Davis essentially took the idea of someone repeating something back at you like a kid would to annoy the shit out of you and made it terrifying. Mad respect. <laughs> stop repeating me, stop repeating me! See, it's already annoying, it's annoying. The Time Beetle, the Time Bug. Definitely not giving that a kissy. Are they scary? No. But are they evil? Very much. Although it needs the help of that lady. So maybe not that powerful, you know? In between B and F. Not bad, but unmemorable. Just a big old bug, innit? Ugh, creepy noise though. Oh, do you remember the noise they... <coughs> Dave! Ross, Davros, it's Davros, hello. You do like him. They don't call him Daddy Davros for nothing, or at least I don't. Gotta go in S, doesn't he? Doesn't he? But then again, he is also kind of the Dalek's bitch. At least in the new run, you know? Because in the classics, he was, you know, the Daleks were fighting to get him, you know? So that kind of does bump him down. I'm gonna put him to in... Between an S and an A. That's where Dave goes. He's not quite an S. I wonder if they'll ever bring him back in just the human form now, because of the whole children in need thing. I think everyone made a bigger deal out of that than they needed to, but it'd still be a cool idea. The Red Supreme Dalek as well. I've, I've specified him as a different one, because they, uh, him and, uh, and Dave kind of have a bit of a back and forth, a bit of a rivalry that could have been a bit of been more if there wasn't a million other things going on in Journey Z. Solid A. Fantastic design, but didn't really contribute much because there was Rose, Mickey, Donna, Martha, Captain Jack, Jackie Tyler. Next is the Flood. Yes, we're jumping ahead quite a lot. These are terrifying and I'd love to see them back. Not gonna lie. Granted, it's an empty child situation where like would you want to see him back, or do you just love it so much? Going in S. We're getting a lot of S's in the late tenant run. Can't help it. There's some good stuff. And the Vespa form. <laughs> Definitely not giving them a kissy. Because A, that cracked mouth looks real gross. And also you become a sort of water zombie. I don't want to become a drowned from Minecraft. Next is the Time Lord Victorious. You can debate this is an, uh, a villain from the same episode, Waters of Mars, and it's David Tennant, so we had to get a wig old kisser from me. Time Lord Victorious idea was kind of dropped and then was turned into a multimedia project no one gave a fuck about uh, many years later. Great idea, poor execution. Then again, that scene at the end of Waters of Mars is good. Right in the middle. Has potential. Not quite achieved. But Time Lord Victorious did lead to Time Fracture existing, so... Mm. Dalton's Rassilon. Rassilon Bond. Do do do. I will not die! Do you hear me? And that spit. <laughs> but really, when push comes to shove, he didn't do fuck all. He just sat there, threw a rock at Earth, appeared for a minute, pointed a big old gloved hand, and then got shot in the stomach by the master. Kinda weak, great performance, didn't do anything. That's a B, I would say. Rassilon is on the same tier as the Vespa form. <laughs> Cope and seethe. Telling me you wouldn't? Don't be a prude. Nerdy prudes must die. Prisoner Zero in the Atraxi. We're on to Smith. Ha <laughs> ha! Matt Smith, we do like him. You may be confused why I've combined these two. That's because I was running out of post-it notes and panicked. I think they do go together quite nicely because I would rank them both the same. Uh, not very scary, but also kind of rad. Attached to a great episode, of course. Would I want to see them come back? Yes, both of them. I would like that very much. Again, would be a great big finish or an independent audio drama. Call me. I think they would long in B, but I want to put them bang in the middle. So I'm gonna put them bang in the middle. Really hope no more goes bang in the middle. The Smilers and I've also put Britain. Just the country of Britain. Specifically the politics, I guess, 
of Britain. Not a good sign that the uh, monarchy still exists all the way in the future. Don't like that. Now the Smilers are scary. This is freaky stuff. The first big scare of the Smith era. Oh, don't like it. It's a very simple idea of just the face turns and he's got a big frown and then it turns again and it's like, ah, but it works, it works. Maybe you'll disagree with me here, but and maybe it's my soft spot for series five, but it's going in A, genuinely going in A. Actually, unprecedented, I'm gonna swap these two. Prisoner Zero and the Atraxia are getting bumped up to A and the Smilers and Britain are going in between A and B. I think that makes sense to me. I can't explain why, which makes the concept of this video pointless, but it makes sense to me, in my heart. I'm a Time Lord, by the way. Uh, my Time Lord name is... The Pussy Smasher. <laughs> Next is the Paradigm Daleks. S, fuck you. You all made fun of the Paradigm Daleks. I remember. I was there. I will never forgive you. S tier. They're great. Great design. Great presence. They're all individual sort of ranks, so they're all, they all had different vibes going on, you know? If they had kept going, I'm sure each of the Paradigm Daleks would have had their own distinct personality. Kind of like they do in the Matt Smith Big Finish run, which I need to re-listen to, but it was fantastic. Angel Bob! Now with the kissing. On the one hand, Twink, in his human form, and kind of cute voice, he's kind of cute, I'd give him a little, a little peck, you know? But, at the same time he's a murderous weeping angel that if you even dare close your eyes for a second and enjoy the kiss, uh, he will snap your fucking neck. So, Angel Bob, he's a really creepy presence. He's not terrifying, at least not to me, but he's creepy as shit. A for Angel Bob. That's how letters work. Oh, look, it's a different colour. Cool. Sexy fish vampires. I mean, that's getting a kiss, isn't it? You don't call something sexy without giving it a little, a little peck. Or further. Don't remember being scared, except for that scene in that green room where Amy's tied down to that chair and is about, and he's getting drunk out of, like, genuinely, <laughs> she didn't talk about that much after that. She got bitten into by a vampire and they just gave her a sweet, cool. But I love it, especially the uh, main woman, uh, Rosario, Rosario de Calvary or whatever. The son's a bit of a dick, but that is kind of the idea. And the, uh, the main vampire girls that go around. I give it an A. You may disagree, but it's an A. Sexy fish vampires, A on the same ranks as Captain Jack, apparently. <laughs> oh, the Dream Lord, straight in S. You all know my thoughts about the Dream Lord, or you don't, in which case, get to know me a little better. I thought you were my friends. Mm. Fantastic performance, genuinely quite scary at points, but also just hilarious. I love him. Uh, I don't like the bit where he transports himself uh, into a robe in the TARDIS, insinuating he wants to fuck Amy Pond. That's messed up. Also, I guess if the Dream Lord is, like, the bad side of the Doctor, there is a side of the Doctor that wants to fuck Amy. That's weird. Think about that every day now. Smith stands. Silurians, uh, like, you know, a layer or res tech. So, you know, what's it called, a scaly? Maybe. Just putting Silurians as a catch-all, because uh, obviously that does also count uh, the scientist Malekith? No, that's the bad guy from Thor 2 that I haven't watched. But it's Eccleston, so Doctor Who adjacent. Malekay. And Eldane? Fuck, how do I remember all these? <laughs> I love the Silurians. I do, I do. I don't think they're S. Are they A? Hmm. I think they're A. I think they're also A. They're, they're on the same par as Sexy Fish Vampires for me. I like them a lot. Next I've just put James Corden. Um, F. Now I did put the Alliance but I've scribbled it out because it's just all the villains, you know what I mean? Then, I mean it'd be S, S tier if you're keen, but you know, Kazran Sardik with a question mark, because he's a bad guy but gets redeemed. But at the same time I put Harriet Jones uh, somewhere on here. So is it a Harriet Jones situation? You know what I mean? Because she does a very bad thing, but then redeems herself at the end. Kazran does very bad things, and then redeems himself at the end. Well, it's only right that I put him on the same bar as Harriet Jones, you know? Also, great performance, Michael Gambon. Dumbledore! Next is the silence! Who's suspiciously not silent? They talk and go really, really creepy. Would be an S tier if they had a character. On vibes alone, A, and the sounds all scary. I remember I was playing, uh, as you would have known, the gunpowder plot adventure games as Smith. Uh, did, sorry, not to break the magic, it wasn't really Matt Smith playing those games. And genuinely the first moment where I walked past and sort of activated a silent, not knowing it was there, really fucked me up. House! From the Doctor's wife, S-tier. And I know he's an entire planet, but that voice is getting a big old kiss from me. Oh, I would not kiss 
James Corden, by the way. Would anyone? How the hell is that Michael Sheen? Jumping into the flesh? I'll be honest, it's an F. It could have been cool, but it's not. Weird performances all round too. Like good actors, but weird performances. Madame Kavarian! That's an F. Not because of the thoughts of Francis Barber, but like she didn't do anything. Yeah, she took Amy's baby. Bit of a dick move. I don't think I'd give Kavarian a kiss. Not my vibe. But you know who I would? River! Uh, slash Mel's as well. I'm counting them as the same because they are the same. They regenerated, you know? Does nearly kill the Doctor. Kind of a douche. Very entertaining. Alex Kingston and the woman who plays Mel's. Entertaining to watch. Bad episode, but entertaining. I'll put him in a solid B. River! We like River Song. Don't do we all. <laughs> uh, Adolf Hitler. Do you reckon Moffat just wrote it to be set in World War II just so Rory could punch Adolf Hitler? <laughs> I'm not against it. I've put the 11th Doctor for two reasons. Uh, the girl who waited and also the Cyber Planner. Two very different villainous performances from Matthew Smith. You could also debate him in Journey is a bit villainous. As his normal self in Girl Who Waited, very villainous, very mean, very rude. And also as the Cyber Planner when he's being taken over. Very mean, very rude, but also a great performance both times. Between S and A, genuinely, yeah. Matt Smith. The Wooden People or whatever, presumably from uh, Doctor Within the Wardrobe. F, I don't remember if it was even a villain. I'm not gonna rewatch it to check, and neither are you. Look at that, adorable. David Bradley and the Peep Show Robots. <laughs> from Dinosaurs on a Spaceship. F, who cares? Guy from Town Called Mercy. I don't mean the robot, I don't mean the shooty shooty robot man. I mean the guy who made the shooty shooty robot man. Because really he's the villain of that story, you know? I would say he's F though. I enjoy that story and I enjoy his performance. But he's kind of unmemorable, really. He's got, you know, yeah, he's just kind of a rude man. I'm gonna put him between F and B. The Shakri, F, ruins the story. Like, come on, Power 3 was really, really good, honestly, but Fuck is ruined by that ending. <laughs> Mob Boss from Angels Take Manhattan. I've already ranked the Angels, and the only other villain from that story is the Mob Boss guy who kidnaps River. Just kind of a mean dude. F tier, fuck you. Uh, the Great Intelligence, Richard E. Grant. Could have been great, but wasn't. I think it's a solid A though. Good performance. Decent appearances. Name of the Doctor I like. Uh, Bells of St. John, he appeared for five seconds, cool. The Snowman, I thoroughly enjoy. And he, he did almost win. He did almost rewrite the entirety of the Doctor's history. That's kind of based. But didn't, somehow, and then just disappeared after Name of the Doctor. <laughs> uh, the Internet, slash Spoon Robots from Bells of St. John. Uh, Internet's very evil, as we know. That's an F though, really, isn't it? You know, because who cares about the Spoon Robots? Would I give Richard E. Grant a kiss? Yeah. Next is the Ice Warriors. Not getting a kiss from me. I know I said I was a scaly, but maybe I'm not, you know? I don't want to see that thing scuttling around outside its suit. Maybe if it's in the suit, it's fine, because it's kind of like, oh, strong man. But like, mm. They're fine. They're fine. They're in the middle. Cool voice. Give it that. Decent screen presence when it's in the suit. But then they took him out of the suit for some fucking reason. And it's not like Empress of Mars really did them any favours either. It's like, who gives a fuck? Now fuck it, I'll put him in booty. I just remember it's my list and I can do whatever I want. Three arseholes from Journey to the Centre of the TARDIS. Um, because they are the villains of that story. Uh, but they're so evil, and so bad to watch, they're going in F. Journey to the Centre of the TARDIS. Why? Miss Gillyflower, or Mrs Gillyflower, I forget uh, her marital status. No thank you. I guess Mr Sweet as well, I should add him. Mr Sweet! Please! Good performance. I enjoy this episode quite a lot, and uh, she is a reason why. You know what these are? The wrong hands! Fuck! Bang in the middle. I would want to see her come back. She wasn't scary, but bloody hell was that entertaining. <laughs> ah, the Zygons! First appeared in Day of the Doctor, later in the uh, Zygon 2 parter from the Capaldi time. Capaldi time, but we'll get this. Same as the Ice Warriors, where it's like it's a classic monster that came back, really cool to redesign, but otherwise, they're, they're fine. They're alright, they're just shapeshifters. Absolutely not getting a kiss. I mean, that's, that's just fucking disgusting. Sort yourself out. Brush your teeth. Jumping forward to Peter Capaldi, we have King John and the robots of Robots of Sherwood. Uh, it's fine. They're between B and F, because good performance from Boff from Johnny English. <laughs> but, like, 
Do you want to see him come back? No, you don't. Don't lie to me, and more importantly, don't lie to yourself. Do better. I'd kiss Boff. Don't act like that. I'm just going to write Boff. The woman from Time Heist. Uh, so basically discount Miss Foster. Where did I put Miss Foster? Because put it this way, wherever I have put Miss Foster, I'm putting this woman from Time Heist below her. There we go. Miss Foster's in B, so it's going between B and F. A slightly weaker version. Robot from Caretaker. Um, the, like, one on the spider legs. Govox Blitzer? Have I remembered the name a little too late? F. I'm genuinely tired. I'm so exhausted. I've been doing this for a couple hours now. Now, this is another tricky one. Does the mummy count? Because, again, at the end, he's just doing his job. It's not his fault. He's in some undead nightmare and he's like being forced to do it until he gets a salute or whatever. Really creepy stuff, but does it count as a villain? Does kill people? That's pre-evil. Oh, I guess the real villain of that story is the guy uh, on the train, the, the train, train announcer guy. But that turns out to be Missy, doesn't it? I'm gonna, t I'm not counting the mummy. Sorry, we've already got enough mummy love here. <laughs> Empty child, get it. Living Graffiti from um, that Living Graffiti one, Flatline. <laughs> if I was younger, it would scare me, but I watched it sort of, I guess, in my teens. So it wasn't scary, actually, because I was a big boy then. Proves itself just to be an evil force because Capaldi tries to give it a chance. He's like, I must play mine, the man who fucks the monsters. Would I want to see it again? Probably not. That's the clencher, so I'm going to put it in B. I don't think you even can give it a kissy. Climate change, I've written, uh, to represent into the forest of the night or whatever. Uh, climate change, very evil. F, eh, fuck you. It may be in Doctor Who, but it's also real. That's a fun fact. Did you know climate change is real? A lot of people don't. We're burning the planet. A Missy, here we are, another master. Third master of the list. Series eight, even a bit of series nine. I could go without Missy, if I'm being honest. It just seemed... Like, oh, they made a Master of them and then they changed the name. Sure, cool, whatever. Call me when I should care. And even the performance, it didn't really speak to me, you know? I think that was also when I started seeing more of the Doctor Who community at large. I wasn't really gauging my, only my own experience, but also everyone else's. And boy, did people hate Missy. <laughs> but Series 10 turned me right around. I loved Missy by the end of it. I loved her arc. Really cool. I think, genuinely, between S and A. Not quite an S, but definitely better than Sim. Face Huggers, I think from last Christmas? F, no, no, no. But you know who is getting a kissy? Missy. Her name literally rhymes with kissy. That's the joke I'm going with. The Fisher King from the two-parter, the flood two-parter. Really cool design. Again, that's one I think as a kid, if it got more play, would have freaked me the fuck out. I'll tell you what, the, bla the black eyes, dead people or whatever, that's oh, oh, scary episode as a whole. But I don't know if I count them as a villain, because what are they really? They're just walking around. <laughs> but, fucking shit. Based purely on the looks, it would be A, but it really doesn't do much when push comes to shove, so it's going to be. My camera is running out of battery and I'm midway through Capaldi's run. I've technically got four doctors left. <laughs> Evil Zygon Clara, Zygella. That's between B and F. Who cares about evil Clara? Do you care about evil Clara? Because I don't. Sleep Dust. From Sleep No More. The old Sleep Dust. Again, I think would have freaked me out as a kid. But I wasn't a kid. I'm a man now, damn it. That's another between B and F. Honestly. Honestly. Not quite an F though. You'd think so, but no. Ashilda slash me. Specifically Face of the Raven because she is the villain in that. Good enough performance. I don't think I'd give her a kissy. Ah, just kidding. I'm just writing me. <laughs> Makes it look very vain. She's fine, B, whatever. She was supposed to be like the new Captain Jack, you know, the new immortal in the verse. In the universe. But... No! <laughs> uh, Hellbent Rassilon, did nothing, F. I know you want to be Dalton Rassilon, but you're not even that. The Twelfth Doctor! Peter Capelli! From Hellbent, yeah, he was a bit of a dick in Hellbent. If I was him, I wouldn't have saved Clara. Fuck Clara. But, do I compare it to the 11th Doctor here? I think he's on the same page, yeah? You know, you know, you know? Next is Greg Davies, the Taskmaster himself, as well as his dope mech suit. I love that mech suit, that's cool. The voice is wicked. Greg Davies, though. It was a Christmas episode, it was funny. That's all it needs to be. Am I scared? No. I'm a mad big boy. Solid B. I don't think I'd give him a kiss. 
There is a lot of handsome heads in there, actually, so maybe I would. Brain Boys from uh, Doctor Mysterio. They're creepy brains with eyes. Ugh. They could have been something, though. They could have been something. Does Do the emoji bots count? Because they're just programmed to do it, right? It's not their fault. No, not counting. Not counting the emoji bots. Next is uh, the enemy from Thin Ice. Racism. Racism's bad. I know, we're here for the hot takes. On the same line, oxygen. Capitalism. Bad. And I don't think you can kiss either of those. Extremist monks are back on track to actual monsters. They could have been something, but they weren't. There's a lot of that going on, isn't there? Cool design. I might, again, if I was younger, maybe I'd be scared. I don't know. They weren't able to make an impression. They're like the silence in a lot of ways, now I'm thinking about it. But I don't think they have a better design than the silence, so... I think between B and F, a Tim Shaw. Yeah, we're in Journey's time now, and we're not starting terribly strong, are we? Appear twice. Why? He's getting no kisses from me. Sorry, Tim. I'm pretty sure Tim Shaw has, like, a proper alien name. But when I looked up on IMDb, uh, he, he is credited as Tim Shaw. So, sorry. Uh, spiders? I guess arachnids in the UK. I like the pating. I do like him. He's a he's an absolute gremlin, and I do like him a lot. Again, not scary, but that's okay. To be the pating. No, you're rushing through these to finish. Next is the concept of sexism. I'm assuming I mean the witch finders here. Sexism's pretty bad, I would say. But then again, the Dalek from Resolution, someone who might be able to give the lone Dalek a run for his money, except not quite. I really like the Resolution Dalek. I think it's probably the most interesting Dalek we've had since the Lone Dalek, if I'm being honest, because who gives a fuck about Rusty? Genuinely between S and A, I really like the Resolution Dalek. Resolution is probably the episode from Whittaker's era, bar power, that I've rewatched the most amount of times. And the Dalek is a big reason why. It's genuinely fantastic. One of Nick Briggs's strongest performances. Final of the Masters. For now. Do, 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 do. It's the Dewan Master. Now, personally, I think he's on par with John Sim. Personally. I like them both, but they're not great. And damn it, it was between A and B. So, um, okay. Dewan Master is going to be attached to Mrs. Gillyflower and Mr. Sweet. It's weird. He appeared in quite a few episodes, but I feel like he deserved more still. Don't know how that works. Rani from the Sarah Jane adventure. Oh no, um, oh yeah, cause she was in Nikola Tesla's Night of Terror or whatever. Uh, cool, just worse Rachnos. I mean, I'm just gonna write Rani on the kiss because, I mean, childhood crush, am I right? But at the same time, she is like, who cares? So, I mean, I put her in between B and F, but because there's barely any space any left, I'm just gonna have to put it in F. Also, maybe we should just bring back every actor from the Sarah Jane adventures, like, you know, Luke, Clyde, Maria, but as villains in Doctor Who, and just see who notices the connection first. Uh, the Division Lady. She probably has a name. I'm not looking it up, are you? Had potential. I'd, I'd give her a kissy. Actually, I'm just gonna write uh, the symbol for Division in maths. You'll get it. But didn't make an impact, because she wasn't allowed to. Here's my problem, right, in hindsight. The whole Timeless Child saga. Either do it or don't. You know what I mean? Maybe people would buy into it if you actually did stuff with it. If we saw the Joe Martin era stuff. Got really deep in the lore. Or just don't. These criticisms are coming way too late. What do you think? So the Division Lady, Soz, but we're going in there. If I can't even be bothered to learn your name, what's the point of you? Mr. Finger. Uh, <laughs> from Can You Hear Me? Uh, absolutely not kissing him. He's into some weird shit. He's up there uh, with the, the gods or whatever, apparently. Sure. I think he was okay. I'll put him in B. Maybe on a rewatch he'd be higher. But I just don't remember or care about him and his wants and his needs. He's like Dream Lord, but worse. You know, he, he sticks a finger in his ear. Sure. So do I. Uh, the Lone Cyberman. Cool. Uh, the Cyberman version of the Lone Dalek. He starts off very strong. Ascension of the Cyberman? Are you kidding me? He's awesome. I love him. That might even be in an S. 
But then he kept coming back and getting worse. Well, first of all, there was the follow-up, which was called... Was it Timeless Child? Where he was basically second fiddle and then gets shrunk at the end. And then he comes back in power of the Doctor, who is... and might as well just be another Cyberman. He's just obeying the Master, because you know what we haven't seen before, the Master and the Cybermen. <laughs> I'm going to keep him in A, because his first appearance was strong. It's just a shame that he wasn't much at the end of the day. Would like to see him back. Genuinely quite scary. Probably the scariest of uh, the whole Whittaker era alongside the Resolution Dalek. Robertson, I'm assuming that's the definitely not Donald Trump guy. He's just an asshole. He's funny, but F still. Come on now. Ah. Oh. Azure and Swarm. Azure and Swarm. Oh, I wanted to love them. I really did. I wanted that to be straight to S. Though that design and the performances are genuinely fucking fantastic. But god damn it. What were they? They did, by the end of it, by the end of Flux, you forget they even exist. Hey, Whitaker's getting audios, isn't she? Bring them back. Do it. Do it. I don't get Chimnal to ride it. I don't care. Do it. But as it stands, the best I can do is a B. The best I can. Then again, they went out like such bastards. We're so close. We're genuinely, this is it. We are so close. The Sontaran from War of the Sontarans, the one who says, I want to ride a horse. Great design, great performance, fantastic dialogue, really good episode. Fuck you. I think I prefer him to General Style. It's close though. But I think this just edges it out because of the design. You know what I mean? Looks on everything, but in this ranking, it suddenly is. The Whipping Angel from Village of the Angels. Where did I put the line side man? Okay, I'm going to put uh, Lone Angel here, between B and A. I think that's where it lives. Maybe it'll go in an A on a rewatch, though. Worth a rewatch, I think. The guy from Eva the Daleks? This guy. You may not think he's a villain, but I hate that guy. I think he sucks. He's a creepy little man. F. Sea Devils, also F. Uh, great design, but that's the classic show. No character, bad episode. I think I might cry. And now we're on to the final stretch, 14 and 15. Uh, first of all, the Meep. I like the Meep. Marion Margulies, fantastic. Definitely got her name wrong just there. Solid A. Goes out like a bitch. Uh, probably better done in the comic, but who cares about the comic? I'm watching a TV with a day for dinner. But yeah, love the Meep. We love the Meep. Yeah, two hearts, count them, yeah. But no things from Wild Blue Yonder. No things. Going straight in the kissy because it's just David Tennant and Catherine Tate. And they can stretch. Imagine the positions. I love Wild Blue Yonder still. Should it have been a 60th? I don't know and I couldn't give a monkeys because it's so good. People will say it's about AI. Great idea, if so. But I don't care. Great performance, just good stuff. The Toy Maker, last of the 60th bunch. Great stuff. Is it an S? I do like the silly accent he puts on. That's nice. Spice Up Your Life is funny. But for some reason I'm hesitating in putting him in S. I don't know why. You know what, I'm putting him in S because I know damn well from watching Doctor Who Unleashed, The Poor Man's Confidential, that he put in a ridiculous amount of effort into the role, even though he had no idea what was going on. And I respect that. Giggle is a mess of an episode, but you can't deny it's not entertaining. It grabs you by the balls and it's like, you're gonna watch this and you're gonna have feelings towards it. Good, bad, meh. But you're gonna watch it. Now we're on to Shooty. Goblins and the Goblin King. Great stuff. Solid A. They try to eat babies. They have a little sing song. Janice is there. Kissy. Fun episode. I'm looking forward to rewatching it this Christmas. It's gonna be good stuff. And I love the Goblins. Goblins are fun! They haven't got much of a character, but they don't have to, they're just little goblins. I like it. Maestro! The question is, Toy Maker's an S. Maestro, it's the child, is it on par with Toy Maker? I fucking love Jinx Monsoon. She was hilarious in this role. Really hope she comes back. Don't know if I was scared, or would be scared if I was a kid. Unless I was against trans people, then I'd be terrified, but luckily I'm not. I think it's between S and A. It's close. I don't know what would put it over the top. Maybe another appearance, because it is a very strong performance, again. Bird People from Rogue. Love Rogue. Love the Bird People. Very camp performance. Good stuff there. Not scary. Uh, I could never be scared of cosplay to death, but I will be very happy about it. I think they're a solid B. B for Bird. As much as I love Rogue and I do love them, by my criteria, it's like, that's, that's really where they live. And one I forgot to write earlier, but I will now, is Rogue himself. Because he is kind of 
one of the instigators of the main conflict. He fully nearly kills the Doctor, like, he's seconds away. Which I respect, granted. I do love him. And again, he is redeemed, so you could debate. But we haven't seen him again yet. Fucking please bring him back. Genuinely. Uh, tell you what, he is redeemed. He's redeemed. I don't know what, I'm being a bit silly. But I did put Captain Jack on, didn't I? Fuck, does Rogue count? He doesn't actually do anything evil. Jo uh, Captain Jack did. That's the distinction. I figured it out. And last but not least, we're up to date, for now, <laughs> before Joy to the World, with Sutek. The new and improved Sutek. Well, certainly the new Sutek. <laughs> Dog Boy. Wouldn't give him a kiss. That's bestiality. Then again, I'm pr I did put a character called The Beast, so... Fuck, I want to love Sutek. God damn it, and I don't care that we didn't see him in his, like, original get-up. That would've been nice. I quite like the dog form. He just goes out like such a bitch, doesn't he? He turns the whole universe to dust, but it doesn't feel like it. That's an episode problem. Gabriel Wolf's voice, again, we talked about The Beast, is silky smooth and fantastic, but we barely get to fucking hear it. I know he's old, but at least give him a lot, another couple scenes. He's going in B. I'm gonna put him in B. That's as nice as I can be. Just for Gabriel Wolf. And Jesus H fuck, we have done it. We have completed it. Here's a close look at the madness. Uh, I'd like to know your thoughts. I'll be honest, this was more shouty and rambly than even I was expecting. And I was expecting it. I think the hot or not thing was a funny idea, but didn't actually make sense in hindsight. But you gotta try something new sometimes, you know? I hope you enjoyed. I certainly did, sort of. I am tired and my feet hurt, but that's because I'm getting old. Just kidding, I'm only 25. Ooh, 26 soon. Couple months. Fun. Happy Halloween, he says on October 6th, as I record this. And, um, uh, leave. <laughs> See, it's all fun and games, but I've got to put this all away now. I've got to put the table out. God, this is all wasted paper now. All oh, that's going in the recycling. <sighs> At least I can say that I give Mr. Finch a kiss. <laughs>